It's Steve. Y'all having fun with us? Yeah. It's hot here. I got to be cool, Dave. I, I got cool my, down. I, yeah, I got my come along coffee. I got it um, with with uh, with the snowman. I noticed the snowman in the background there too. I'm trying to get cool. It's always cool when we're talking mules and donkeys. It's always cool. We like to have fun here, and we're gonna have fun all hour. Yeah, we got a little bit. It was between the mamas and the pop. That's mamas and papas, right? Yeah, mamas and yeah. papas. Yep. It was between the mamas and the papas and Neil Diamond, and we decided to go with mamas and the papas. California dreaming, cool enough. Even California? though I didn't want to go to that third country, you know. Yes, yeah. it's changed quite a bit. But hey, oh, you know buddy. what hasn't changed, Steve? What's that? What's that? The, the way Dude. the mule and the donkey communicates. Yeah, you're right. It's the same. So same. all that we got to do is change how we communicate with them, and that's what we're here to do today, right? That's right, buddy. That's, That's right. what we're going to do. Hey, everyone, my name is Dave. Uh, this here is Steve Edwards. Every week we get together, talk about mules and donkeys, uh, help you get out there, get your animal, uh, build that relationship, become the herd leader, and experience results when you get out and uh, train and ride and drive and whatever it is you want to do. We know that this is a lifelong dream for so many of you, and you want that to stay a dream. You don't want it to turn into a nightmare. And so every Wednesday we get together and we answer as many questions as we can so that it stays the dream. So you get to live that dream and you get to invite other people in. So uh, the way this works is there's really only three things you need to know. First and foremost is that we want to know you. We want to know that you're here. And so you'll probably see some folks already putting in the comments section. Uh, you can join with them, put your name where you're watching from, and what the weather is like there today. And the reason why we do that is because we genuinely want to know you're here with us. Um, we know a lot of you are watching, and uh, sometimes it, it might take a little bit of uh, courage to put your name in there and just let yourself be known. And uh, we just want to invite you to do that because we really want to know that you're here, and we want to greet you by name. Second thing that we ask is that you ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got, Put it in the comment section. If you're thinking it, somebody else is probably thinking it. And if they're not thinking it this week, chances are they're going to be needing it next week or the week after, and they're going to be grateful that you asked. So go ahead. Don't be selfish. Put that, that question in the comment section. Any questions acceptable. Nothing is off limits, and uh, and we'll do our best to give you the answer that, uh, that you need. And sometimes uh, it'll be an easy answer. Sometimes it'll be involved and take some time. Sometimes it'll be something that's free for you to do. And sometimes it's going to require a little bit of an investment on your part. But in the end, we're going to give you the information that you need and we're going to be honest about it. And then the third thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast. Um, the reason why we're able to do this every single week is because so many of you not only show up week in and week out. I'm thinking about Eileen. I'm thinking about Herschel. I'm thinking about Linda. I'm thinking about Meredith. I'm thinking about a lot of our friends, David, uh, everyone who shows up every single week. Uh, that allows us to do it. But you sharing the broadcast with others allows us to do it as well. And that's really what helps us make a bigger difference in this uh, mule and donkey community. So the way you do that is if you're watching on YouTube, you click the like button and then you subscribe to the channel. And that lets YouTube know that this is worth recommending to other folks. And then if you're on Facebook, the way that you do that is you click the share button and then you post it to your page or you can tag friends or family members in the comment section. So with that out of the way, we'll get to uh, saying hello to some of our friends. And uh, we got a bunch of questions, uh, carryovers from last week because we had a, a, a hard stop. So we've got a few carryovers and I've got some new ones. And then, of course, folks are going to share some. So Eileen is here. Well, all righty then. Yes, Eileen, all righty then indeed. David is here from East Texas. A front's coming through and going from 62 this morning to the 20s tonight. Glad to see you guys. Stay warm, David. Levi is watching. Howdy, fellas. Coming in from Galloway, New Brunswick, Canada. And you know what we like to do here? We like to go international. Thank you so much, Levi. 
Uh, cold and snowy outside. Watching with my Steve Edwards belt buckle. Hey, that's a that is a collector's item right there. It is. That Polly is. is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota. Negative six with a negative thirty-five wind chill. Wisely staying in the house. Judy is watching. Uh, Stephen Dave from Miss Daisy and Me, Norco, California, Horsetown, USA. Greg is watching from Newton Grove, North Carolina, sunny in 40s. Uh, Steve. Hi, Steve. This is Virginia from Cold Santa Fe. My come-along hitch came off my Molly's nose today, and I was without any control outside the barn. What went wrong? Can I use a halter as a backup? So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Steve, what went wrong? It came off the nose. What went wrong was, number one, you weren't completely paying attention. You know how along the road you got rumble strips because all of a sudden you don't think about your driving and you're going to the right. You go, blah, 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 blah. That's because you wasn't paying attention. And then rumble strips will tell you, get back in the center. And then on the left-hand side, you got little bumps too that goes, bump, bump, bump. And that's to tell you, get back in the center. Yeah, because we lose conscious of it. Listen. In your hand, in your hand, you are going to feel her all the time. You keep an eye, folks, your right eye should be looking over your shoulder when you're leading. Your left eye should be looking straight ahead. So you're just kind of doing this and this, paying straight ahead. Anytime that come along rope moves, it's because you moved, okay? So uh, I would like to have seen it. I Hopefully you, you need to send me a picture sometime to see it on air. I'm sure you've got it on right, uh, but it should work out, should work out good. So going back to, to her, uh, she's in a barn with a lot of other folks and, and other opinions. Yes, guess what the opinion was for her? One of the opinions was this, that she needed to take her mule, which was pacing up and down, pacing up and down, pacing up and down because it wanted to be out with some of the other horses out there. And everybody says, oh, take that mule and put it out there with that gelding and let them play together. Guess what, folks? That gelding would be pounding on that mule or that mule, which does not too likely, would be pounding on that gelding, all right? Because one of them is going to be the top of the pecking order. You need to be the top of the pecking order. In result, she left her mule in there, and now the mule is being quiet. Everything's good. Everything's good. So I'll go back to the come along rope. The come along rope moves up and down the nose because when you bump on it, it makes it tight. Okay? Bump on it makes it tight. When you, when you come back with your hand loose, now it loosens up around the nose. When you bump on it, it tightens up. When you take, when you get relaxed, it widens out. So here's what happened. Your loop got too loose. So from the nose to your hand, it was too loose. So the everybody, not only feel, not hold on to, okay, but only feel. Play the tune like your hands. Play the tune, okay? Like this. Play the tune. You ready? Okay, so here's the tune. That's the tune. See that? Little finger, next finger, next finger, next finger. That's playing the tune. What you don't want to do is pull, and that is this. See that? All fingers close at the same time. Don't do that, folks. Ask, tell, demand. Okay? Go go from there. So anyway, yeah, Miss Shepard, you keep on going. You're doing good. Folks, she went and, and uh, came from, what, Connecticut, I think it was, and moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Beautiful country. How fun. Uh, awesome. Great question. Thanks so much, Virginia. Karen is watching. Stacy's watching from California. Judy is watching, says Daisy is still doing good. We'd like to hear that. Susan is watching from Kingman, Arizona. We got Cowboy Ken here hanging out with us again from 
Uh, Connecticut, 42 degrees and cloudy. Karen is watching from Central Virginia. Matt's in Southern California. Uh, let's see, Mark Williams from Virginia got seven inches of snow and calling for more the weekend. Uh, so I guess I'd say enjoy the snow while you've got it or hopefully it melts soon. You can choose which one you want there, Mark. Uh, let's see here. Virginia follows up, says, I've gone over the videos many times trying to put the come along hitch right. Obviously, I've done something wrong. Thank you so much for all your help. Yeah, it is a little bit tricky, but once you get it, you'll know you got it and you'll get it from there on out. I, I it, it can be a little bit tricky. That's tricky. That's why we've recorded uh, probably 10 videos. of St Every time I get together with Steve, I'm like, hey, Steve, can, you, can I get you recording the come along rope, putting it on? He goes, we already got that. And I was like, no, but I want to show them a different angle. I want to show them a different animal because I know that that can help. So thanks for letting us share that with you, Virginia. Jackie is watching from Placidas, New Mexico. Weather is partially cloudy, 46 degrees. Quick question. Should I use the rope halter or come along to pony Annie? And I'm guessing come Annie's on. an equine. Come, yes. Yeah, that's right. Come along, come along, come along, come along, come along. Listen, folks, I want you to very, very, very use that rope halter to a small amount. Okay? Please. Uh, and I just haven't stressed this, but I guess I need to stress it more. I got a, a picture of a guy who sent me a picture of a colt with a, a rope halter on. And the, the, it was not adjusted correctly. And he said, Steve, I don't want to make any mistakes. So I called him up like I do everybody. And I said, mistake number one, take that halter off, throw it away, and put the come along hitch on there. Folks, listen, if, if, if you watched me work the majority of the time with these animals, it is with the come along hitch. At any one time, they can become a mule. In other words, they do what they want to do. They do, okay? Uh, that come along hitch will keep your communication going. When do I use the rope halter? And I told you all this. Now, you never tie with the come along hitch. Always teach them. And I'm sure Dave's got some videos. We need to start finding those, Dave, those videos where Dave, where I show the ground timing and how I can put the rope on the ground and the mules stay there because they have respect for that, okay? Now let's go on. When it comes down to the rope halter, if I have to use it, uh, I, will, I will use it when I tie one up overnight to a high line. If I have to use it, I'll tie one up when I'm gonna tie them uh, on the side of the trailer. Okay, but now listen to me, folks. I never tie my mules inside a trailer. Okay, I should say rarely do I do it. Rarely. If I've got a bunch of mixed mules and stuff, it's one thing. But usually what I do is I bring the mule in, I pull the halter off, I close the gate. Unless I got a complete open trailer, like when we go down the Andrada, then a lot of times, and we got saddles on them, we have bridles hanging. So a lot of times we'll tie them in that for that respect because we don't want the other animals to chew on the other saddles and stuff, which they can do. But otherwise, folks, listen, uh, we need to find some of them videos, Dave, like one, one where I'm picking up the back feet and where I'm teaching some ground manners where they learn to stay in place. That's one of the things I teach you in my, in my classes, you all, is to teach that mule not to move unless that lead rope is picked up. And folks, listen, as soon as you pick up on that lead rope, you're starting a conversation. When you pick up on that come along hitch. So there you are. Use, use, use your halter minimal. Use your come along hitch from where you pick them up in the corral to where you go over to, to prepare them for saddling. Get them to where, and this is important folks, more important than riding. Get them to where you can stand with, they can stand with the come along hitch on the ground and you walk in and out of the tack room, brushing and picking up the feet, saddling, bridling, and everything without them moving. That's total respect. Total. And that's what, that should be your goal. Awesome. 
Very good. Thank you so much for the question there, Jackie. Always appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Wilmar's watching from Minnesota. Cold here. Love your program. Thank you both. Appreciate that, Wilmar. Jim is watching from Tampa, Florida. Hey, Jim, I want to ask you something. There's this barbecue joint. It's like, I think it's called Four Rivers Barbecue. They had a sandwich there called the Burnt Ends Melt. Have you ever been, what do people think about Four Rivers Barbecue in Tampa. I'd love to hear that. I went there and I love it. And I'm going to Florida in March and I'm planning on driving from Orlando to Tampa to have it again. Do you have any other barbecue recommendations? Because that burn in smell, oh, Steve, it was so good. The only regret that I had from that trip to Four Rivers Barbecue was that I filled up on sides before my sandwich arrived. This time I'm ordering just the sandwich. I'm not ordering anything else. It was so good. Jim, if you haven't been there, I recommend it. Carla is watching, says, uh, freezing up here, more hay, uh, more hay. All right. Herschel is walking, watching. Steve, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Herschel, uh, Herschel watches every single, I think just about every single video that we do, whether it's live or whether it's on the recording. He leaves a comment on every single live video just saying, Herschel watching here. So I really appreciate that. He's one of the few who, who really does show up every single time. I think that's pretty neat, Herschel. Thank you. Samantha is watching. Beautiful day. Driving back to Riverside from Palm Springs. That is a pretty boring drive. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I've made that drive many, many, many times. Stay awake with us there, Samantha. Uh, let's see here. Carla is watching Northern British Columbia. We like to go international and Samantha or Carla has helped us again. Mary Jo's watching from uh, Montana. Greg says, I bought the Mule Rider Martingale a year or two ago for a different mule. Never used it, but ready to try it now with my new mule. Is there a video that I can watch to get refreshed on how to use it again? Now we have the Mule Rider Martingale video that comes with it. Um, so Greg, uh, send me an email, um, support at muleranch.com. Let me know if you got that or or, uh, or what email address you used and, and we'll get you fixed up there. Uh, let's see here. Carol Joe is watching from Colorado. Uh, Myra is here from Southern California. We've got Steve watching from Delta, Colorado. Little breezy, but good working and riding weather. Steve, what is your opinion on using the elbow pull for bidding up? What is elbow pull for bidding up and what's your opinion about it, Steve? You got me on that one. I've, I've never heard of an elbow pull for bidding up. Uh, maybe uh, that was that dance move that I did you know, yeah, about 10 years exactly. ago when I That's right. still but moved what pretty I've always easily. Done is is I put my right hand behind the ears, they drop the pole. I put my uh, left hand, I use, the, I use this finger right here, and I rub the bars of the mouth. And when I rub the bars of the mouth, that makes it comfortable and they drop their head and they, oh, they just love that thing when you rub the bars. And, um, and I know a lot, a, lot, a lot of people don't wanna see this, but it's the best finger to use in there to rub on those bars. See, there's no teeth. There's no teeth from the canine to the incisors. There's no teeth. So you rub this area here with your finger. Oh, man, that makes them feel good. We've, we've done it a few times. And I always get people's attention when I say, use this finger here first, you know. And of course, you know, with me and with you, my brother, we turn around what's bad into good, right? That's right. Redemption, like F, baby. Yeah, just like the F-bomb, we got free. And free! They Free, Free, baby. Redemption, baby. Uh, Redemption. That's right. Steve, if you want to go ahead and uh, um, clarify what you mean about the elbow pull, though, that'd be great. Uh, let's see here. Joan is watching from Buffalo Creek, Colorado. We've got Fiery Waco, North Texas, 50 degree day. Rip is watching. Might rain today. Rip, give Steve a call on those cinches if you haven't talked to him yet. Y'all can get that worked out. Okay, good. David Pingelli's here, Manchester, Georgia. Come along coffee and all. Let's see here. Get you all self some come along coffee. I'll put the link in the yep. comment section. Yep. CJ and Steve are watching from Colorado. We've got Billy watching snowy day in Toronto. Gone international again. We got Lydia watching Northeast Ontario, Canada. Somebody up there been talking about Steve Edwards because we got a lot of our friends north of the border hanging out. 
Uh, Mark is watching uh, Raining in Oregon 51. My wife and I enjoy your videos. Glad to hear that. Thank you, Mark. Susan asks, Steve, do you have any clinics scheduled this year? We had one and I forgot what date you said, Steve. I, I'd have to look again, but I think it's second week of April. We need to get that information out there. Susan, you've, uh, you've lit a fire yeah. underneath the tush here. We'll get it figured out and we'll get a date yeah. for you. James yeah. is watching from Missouri, 20 uh, degrees here. Next question that I got, this one came from Lisa last week. She said, I'm having problems with a five-year-old I bought. He will jerk back when he's tired of me leading him around, take off with me attached. I'm a small woman uh, and 61. He's pulled me through the snow a few times. What is Lisa dealing with here, Steve, and what does she need to do? Mule skiing. Yep. People are learning about mule skiing when they get mules. It's called mule skiing. They're holding on the rope and the mule is taking them off. Oh, yes, and that can be ugly. I've seen some uh, some road rash of some folks that uh, didn't let go. Just let go, all right? Just let it go. And the butt, let's go back. Where do we start? Ground communication kit. Hear that kit. Don't just buy the come along and say, okay, I got it made. The video that I have that goes with it, not only instructs you how to put the come along head on correctly, but it instructs you how to build a foundation, okay? And that's really, really important because you see a buckaroo from Montana, he had dragged his mule behind a pickup truck and all this sort of thing, kaboom. So folks, take your halters and, and hang them on the wall or throw them away. Throw them away if it's a nylon halter with with uh, the metal clasps. Um, those especially. Don't use them on the mule. Don't use them. Throw them away. A, a properly adjusted rope halter, yes, but 99.9% .9 of the time, put the come along hitch on there. Get them used to, to respecting you on the ground and respecting that that rope. When you pick it up, it means something, okay? Now, again, folks, I got to talk about my favorite cowboys, favorite cowboy movies, Randolph Scott, you know, and, of course, the Duke, John Wayne, uh, 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 Ben Johnson, you know, all those guys. Watch them. Watch them when they get on. Hand on the horn, hand on the mane, climb up at the shoulder. Not hand on the cannon, hand on the horn, pull themselves in. No. Why is that? Have you ever seen a saddle roll? Yeah, even my saddle, as good as it is, and as solid as things are with it, okay? Even it will roll over on a fat mule, okay? Understand that, that's important, all right? Since we don't use a wither on a mule, and if you go do use a wither, it's up too far, you're gonna have a problem. So let's go back. Watch them on cowboys, what do they do? They ride up. They pull the bridle off and they put their rope halter on. No, they don't. They ride up. They take and throw a rein around the uh, hitching post. And the mule stays, the horse stays there. Why is that? They've got so much respect for that bridle. They don't want to pull on it. When you've got a halter puller or one that wants to leave or wants to pull on you, why are you riding it? Hear that? Why is it so important to ride a mule that you can't trust on the ground? If you can't trust it on the ground, why are you getting in a saddle? Oh, I see. I know why. You want to call out the boys in blue with that big million dollar truck that pulls up and they're going, rrr, rrr. yeah, that's called the fire department because you just broke ribs or whatever you may have broke. No, no, you don't want to do that. Why are you getting in the saddle? But I just bought this mule, Steve. I just bought this mule and it's and it, I seen the guy ride it. Well, you seen him ride it. Not you. Or you seen a 10-year-old girl ride it. Not you. Get your foundation set on the ground. On the ground. If you can't handle them on the ground, don't climb in the saddle. Ah, I'll give you a whole bale of hay there. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, let's see here. We've got, uh, let's see, Vicki hanging out from Queen Creek. 
Been riding my mule shoes thin with all this great weather we are having. That's right. It's beautiful Good. out there. Mary Jo says, does it matter if you start the come along, if you start the come along, wraps around the nose on the right versus left side of the face? In the video, you start on the animal as the right side of the nose. Does it make a difference, Steve? Okay. When I'm standing on the left, that is the near side. That's the left side. Looking from the mule's tail forward, left is the near, right is the off. So standing on that side, once you put the loop over and it goes behind the ears, it makes no difference where that loop is. You go right to left. So offside to near side, right to left around the nose, right to left again. The second one goes above the first one and then you pull the first one up and it goes up over top of yours. Make sure you make a big loop and then go up over top the right ear first, left ear second. Why the right ear first? Because if you do it on the left ear first, you'll push the head away from you. I want that left brain to be here looking at me, here thinking of me. You push it on the left side, you're going to push it away, and that left brain isn't going to be paying any attention. So put it on the right ear first. That makes the mule tip his head to the left. That left brain is still looking at you. And then you pull it over on the left ear, and then you adjust it two fingers above the nose. Two fingers. Now, will it go up and down? Yes, because at first, it's two fingers above the nostril, and it fits like this. As you use it, you pull on it, and it gets tighter. When you make it loose, it gets looser. So guess what? If you make big movements pretty soon, that loop is so big, where's it going to go? Either up to his eyeballs or off his nose. Right, Mrs. Shepard <laughs> from Santa Fe? That's right. Uh, let's see here. Shelly asks, this was from last week as well, Steve. My mule gets half an hour out of her paddock and shelter every day while I clean the place. Water and food, uh, water and get food ready. Uh, at the end of the half hour, she walks over and wants back in her paddock. Half an hour of rolling and chasing with my horse and she just wants to be alone. Oh, so, so she made that comment there. But that's pretty true. Like we think they want treats. We think they want love and affection. Really all they want is just to be left alone. Yeah, they, they really do. You know, I mean, we're, we're a predator. We're a mountain lion on them. And we, folks got to get that in their mind. You're a predator. You eat meat, some of you. And, and so what's really important to understand is this, is it, you have to be the herd leader. Just like Miss Shepard was saying, and I was talking about earlier, that everybody told her, put the mule out there with the horse and it'll be fine. I tell you what, folks, I know some folks that have done that and they end up with a big vet bill or done that and now they can't get that horse away, or that mule away from that horse, da, 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 you know, listen. <laughs> Don't listen to them folks or don't listen to me. Either one, whatever you want to do. If it works for you, use it. If it don't work for you, don't use it. That's, that's what we, that's what we say. If it, we'll give you the information and you all run with it. And, and, uh, and if you get hung up, give us a call. We'll help you fix it out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Linda says, I don't understand disengage hind quarter or disengage shoulder. Um, what do you mean when you say I don't when when you say disengage, disengage hind quarter or disengage the shoulder, Steve? Okay. So let me see if I can get this. This right here is the front foot. Okay. And this here is the rear foot. Now, what I need to do is I need to disengage the rear foot is to move it left or right. So now here's two fingers, okay? If I want to disengage the hind quarters, this is the rear end. I simply move my mule back, put pressure so that they move on the right. Let's just say I'm gonna do it with the right rear foot, go to the left. 
So I'm going to take the mule and I'm going to go around in circles. And I'm basically going to take the hind end and I'm going to move it off to the left or I'm going to move it off to the right. Okay, you got that? So I'm moving the hind end to the left or to the right. Now disengage the shoulders. It's what I do with the mules, okay? And I move that front end over to the left. Get over the camera here. Over to the left or over to the right. In other words, I move both front feet to the right. I move both front feet to the left. That's disengaging front shoulders. Disengaging hindquarters. I move the back end to the left. Disengage your hindquarters. I move the back end to the right. Now, how do we do that? We do it like this. My hands are ice cream cones. When I turn my right hand, I am picking up on the right shoulder. Okay, so I'm here. I pick up on the right. The people are trying to get a hold of you. Someone, someone's saying yeah. like, "Ooh, I need to call Steve right now." Y'all know this. Steve calls everybody back. They're and calling. They're leaving a voicemail. Steve calls them back. So Steve will call you back. All right, go ahead, Steve. All right. So let's go back. So this is what I mean by this. With a horse, and I, I never done this stuff. Okay, to speak of a little bit of it when I'm side passing stuff. But with a horse, horsemen like to disengage the hindquarters. So now let's get this. Let's just see what they do. The horse is running off. He's a dead runoff. So they take up one rein and they pull up on it. And that moves the back end over and they go, the back end goes around in a circle. One rein. One rein stop. Disengage hind quarters. Now, with a mule, I disengage the shoulders. So I take, I, I want to, let's say the mule's going to the right. Most people will pull the left rein to keep them from going right. Well, if you kind of think about that, that makes sense a little bit, but here's the problem. The mule is still going through the shoulder while I'm trying to pull him to the left. He's trying to go to the right. I'm trying to pull him to the left. So this is what I do. I have my hands in ice cream cone position. When that right shoulder, he's running fast through his right shoulder, I take my hands and I turn up on them like this. You see that? I turn my hand up. I go from ice cream cone and I turn it up. That's all movement I need. And all I have to do is hold it right there. And I would disengage. In other words, I will pick up the front shoulder and the front leg and I will move it across. Now, at home, when you are training, you should be training to do this because one day you're going to have a barking dog come out at you or a barking neighbor. I don't know, whatever. Okay. And you're going to need to stop because it startled your mule. Mules, horses are equine. Donkeys are equine. Flight because of fright. It's what they do. I'm here, Steve. I'm right here. Hey, hold on just a second. I think I hear my dog out here in the back barking. And I, I've had a mountain lion running around here, so I want to keep track of it. Hop Hold out on there. So, folks, while Steve's uh, while F Steve stepped away, um, I wanted to remind you that if this is the very first time you're hanging out with us, I just want to say thank you. I'm glad that you're here, spending a little bit of time with us. And what you can do is you, we'd ask three things. Number one that you share uh, your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like. And the reason we like doing that is because we want to know that you're here. We want to say hello, we want to know your name, and we want to greet you. Uh, we're kind of old-fashioned that way. The second thing is that we ask that you uh, put any and every mule question that you've got in the comments section. That way we can get you some results when you get out there and uh, your dream of owning equine does not turn into a nightmare. And then the third thing that we ask is that you uh, share the broadcast with other people. And so if you're watching on YouTube, the way you do that is just click the like button on the video, that thumb right there, 
and then subscribe to the channel. That lets YouTube know that this is worth recommending, uh, and it really does actually make a very big difference. Um, it's not one of those things where that's just what everyone says because that's what everyone says. It actually makes a huge difference, and the more likes that we get, and the more subscriptions that we get, the more YouTube puts our channel in front of other people. And if you're on Facebook, it's very similar. Just click the like button and then click the share button and post it on your wall or tag a friend or family member. So Steve, everything okay? Everything's good. The neighbor's bull just over here by the fence and Jess was telling him that's his fence. Yeah, well, you know, that happens where I live too in the suburbs, so. Well, you got a bull running around in the suburbs? Uh, I got a four-year-old who thinks he's a bull running around in the suburbs. <laughs> oh, Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Stevie, he's about to turn, he's about to turn five years old. He's going to be five oh. years old in just under a month, and I can't believe it. Man, I'm flies. Can't believe it. All right, next question here. This one comes in from Judy. She's been a horse person all her life. Uh, she got bucked off... Uh, um, uh, a while back, uh, heartbroken because she'd already gotten along really well. Uh, but she's really enjoyed listening to everything you have to say. And her husband said that he would like to have a mule. So she says, the real reason I'm writing this is because there was a video that came, uh, there was a video that came through social media showing these poor female donkeys being bred by full-size horses. I felt so sorry for them because they didn't even look old enough to be bred and the stallions were so much bigger. Is this what these poor donkeys have to go through so people can get a mule? I told my husband I would only own a mule if its mother was a full-size horse and a sire was a donkey. Thanks so much for everything you do to help educate people, Judy. And so I figured you'd have something you'd want to share about this. Well, a lot of people pasture bred breed. In other words, when the female becomes uh, in estrogen and when she's in heat, the horses will come along and breed them, okay? That is called a henny. With a donkey being the mother, the father being the horse, that is a henny. The only way you can tell a henny is either know for sure who the dad mom was or the only other way is a DNA testing. That's the only way. Now, if you want a mule, Father being the donkey, mother being the horse, breed them that way. Now, a lot of people pasture breed, okay? And it can be pretty tough um, on both because some mares go to kicking and biting and things like this, and some studs go to kicking and biting as well. I never suggest pasture breeding, folks. If you want to breed your mare and you want to have a nice mule baby, Find a good jack and do AI work. And that way you'll be guaranteed an easy 96% guaranteed you'll have a good quality mule. Okay. Uh, and, and, and that's one way I prefer to buy a yearling if I was you and not have to go through all of the things that can happen with, uh, with a mare. But anyway, uh, yes, I'm sorry you had to, that's what happens. A lot of people don't care, folks. Listen, only thing they care about is when that mule baby hits on the ground, that's a dollar for them. And I know people that just turn, I know of people that just turn all kinds of mares loose with a jack out there and away he goes. They never really know when they're bred. Uh, but a lot of times I've seen jacks with broken legs because the mare has kicked them and it can be pretty dirty. So that's why I tell you folks, AI am you're done. Uh, this one goes along. This one came in from Anik. And uh, my husband and I ride our two gated horses in Connecticut on our farm and other trails. I have for a long time been intrigued by the mule, uh, by the mule work habit as well as the ability to be ridden, which I experienced firsthand in, a South, Car in South Carolina on a quail plantation. Has the mule as a domesticated and working animal still a place in today's world? What are the preferred characteristics for the jack and the preferred breed for the mare when breeding? Thank you, Anik. Okay, preferred characteristic number one, disposition, disposition, disposition. Do not buy a mule that doesn't have a good disposition. Now their problem is a problem I know a lot of you have purchased animals that you just watched them on a video and then you had them shipped to you. Now I'm going to tell you 
if I had to guess at all, at least 65, 70% of the people who end up with these mules end up with problems. Okay. Disposition first. If that mule's disposition works with you, then by God, you've got a working relationship. But that hands-on, smell them and touch them is what's really important. Going back. So same thing with the jack. That jack needs to have a good disposition, nice and willing and, and, and easy on the bridle, okay, or easy on the, the halter uh, leading. So let's go back. Next part, confirmation. Confirmation. You want straight legs. And you want straight bodies. Here's the problem. And, and this is this is a shame, folks, because just like the people who pasture breed, okay, and I, I'm not saying they're bad people, okay, it's just that my preference so that I can keep track of my mares and my jacks and stuff is to have them in stalls. But I, I really prefer to AI. Let's go back. Disposition. Confirmation. I want straight legs and this sort of thing. Look at your jacks. How straight are they? How straight do they look? And don't listen to this stuff that they're gated. Seem like everybody says they're gated. I have seen very few truly gated jacks in the United States. I have seen gated jacks in Brazil, the Pega donkey. And I mean that them jacks are definitely animated. But they're animated, get this, in the front end and the back end. Yes much like a fox trotter horse which is very much my favorite kind of horse if i'm going to breed to one i would like to see it bred to a fox trotter why because a fox trotter drives off his back end in other words he uses his hind legs as well as the front end so he's animated front and rear that gives you the nice ride they round out their back and that's what you want, folks. Now think about this. Look at your Tennessee Walker, folks, and some of your possible phenols. Your possible phenols and your possibles. Their head is elevated. They're holding on to the reins really heavy. And they've got a cavison on their mouth to keep them from gapping their mouth. And they're spurring them, breaking them into the, the fast walk that they do. Okay? And, and I understand. Okay? Uh, it's not my preference. My preference is to round them out. Give them drive off the hind quarters, head down, balance. Top of the hip, top of the wither, top of the head, balance all the way across straight. Not like this. Just think about what's happening to the backbone here. That backbone is going from being like this to now it's like this. Because when the head is elevated, folks, that spine has to break. And I'm, I'm over emphasizing it. But it has to break in two, so to speak. So it's going to be doing like this. And you're on their back. So let's go back. My preference would be a fox trotter with a good, solid, standard jack. Now get this in your mind, folks. All of a sudden, the gated frenzy is on. This past 10 years has been gated frenzy. Everybody's got to have gated. The problem is, number one, most of them gated animals are not well trained. They can go fast, straight ahead. They have, rarely do they have a good backup. Rarely do they have a good stop. Rarely do they have a neck rein. Now, I've trained a lot of mules. And just this last year, I did one for a guy up in Montana, Bill. Great guy. Great guy. And he bought two really, very, very nice mules. And one was, I, I mean, you can see him on the, in the video. Man, he just could flat run. Well, look. That's fine for you by yourself, but try and have the rest of the riders trying to keep up with you. No, okay? The big problem is, number one, everybody thinks the only thing they got is one speed, everybody goes fast. That means my grandkids have got to try to keep up. No, that means my wife has got to try to get keep up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a skillet across my head if my wife has to do that. So let's go back to this. Disposition, disposition, disposition. Confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. Next thing is proper uh, training. Groundwork first. You cannot do enough groundwork. Before I would climb on any of you, before you climb on the average mule that's supposed to be trained, 
you do groundwork. And when you're doing good at groundwork and you can be consistent at it four to six hours a week, then ride. Why are you want to pay for ER visits and them hospitals? Not no good. No good. Okay. Do your groundwork. Get soft solid with that. Okay. Now I can tell you I've done demonstrations at clinics when I'm literally riding a mule that never been rode in less than an hour because every move's a picture. I know what's next. I can feel the mule. I know what's happening. And then one hour I can usually be on the average mule or donkey. Okay. Not the best ride in the world, but they usually, they always do good. So let's go back to this folks. When you buy, you buy disposition. Don't listen to these guys who say, Oh, they've been a hundred hours up in Colorado elk hunting or, or my 10 year old rides this mule. That's the problem, folks. Most of them 10 year olds can outride me. Most of them 10 year olds have got no fear the way they go. And everybody thinks, oh, hey, if that kid can ride, I can ride him. Not, okay. I, I can make a mule look really good in a matter of minutes. Matter of minutes. And I've told you all this story before, and I'm going to tell you this story. I'm going to leave it, okay? Okay. I used to bring a mule to, to my clinics and let people see what they did. And I gave demonstrations on Friday night. And you see that mule just do all kinds of stuff. I call the audience down who've been riding 20 years. Hands fly up. Come on down here, one of you, and ride. 15 minutes later, it looks like my mule that you just saw trained, that just did everything I wanted. 15 minutes later, that person could hardly get the mule to do anything. Got that? Out. Yeah. It, and then they want to blame it on the mule. Well, then I get back on it. All of a sudden, the mule's doing everything, not the mule. Okay, so let's go back to this. Okay, they're as well trained as you are. And just because you see them riding up and down the street, or you see some kid riding around in a round pin, or you see him crossing a river, that is not showing you training. Training, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, back up lightly, okay? Side pass, turn on the forehand, on one hand. That's a trained mule, which is far and in between. Two hands, two hands is direct reining. That is an, a, either a partially trained mule or a green mule. Folks, they're putting big prices on these mules and they're nowhere near worth what half of what they're doing. A mule has a natural single foot walk. Where did they get that? From the daddy, the donkey. Right side, left side, right side, left side. Smooth riding, okay? Smooth riding. But, okay, let's go back on this last. If you buy gated, you're going to be spending more money than what you need to be doing. There you go. Uh, you could go. <laughs> you could. That's such a big question, and there's so many different ways that you could go about it. And then it really kind of depends on you know the mule, the individually mules. You want to check them out, but then you need to know those particular animals. You need to get a feel for them. But the disposition, you can see certain traits. We actually have a video called "So You Want to Buy a Mule," which actually goes through all of the things that you were talking about, Steve, in more detail, you pointing them out with disposition and, and things like this. So good good question, good answer. Um, uh, let's see here. Michelle is watching from Ohio. Uh, Tony is watching from Port Angeles, Washington. We've got Mickey in uh, who uh, is talking to back and forth with uh, Karen watching from Virginia. Uh, Michelle's watching from Ohio. We've got, uh, let's see here, Trace. Hey, Taking us down under. Good day, Stephen Day from Lawn Lowood, Queensland, Australia. Having a good time riding my mule on your cowboy saddle. Billy's got a question. Do mules judge the threat level of a person by their size at all? Like, are they more likely to be nervous around a larger adult versus a child or a shorter person? How predictable are their instincts there? Well, folks, that's one of the reasons I tell you all the time. You be careful with your kids around mules and donkeys, especially a new mule, okay, uh, or a new donkey. Donkeys are herd protectors. And when they see something small, they're thinking that they're sneaking up on them. That's what mountain lions do. That's what coyotes do, sneak up on them, okay? 
And I can tell you some awful stories of kids with the mule has either bit or hit with his front paw or something like that because they felt threatened from a predator. If they're a great big guy, uh, I wouldn't worry about it so much, okay? But when those kids, they're at the wrong height to get themselves kicked or bit and this sort of thing. Uh, Michelle says, there is a lot of bull in the suburbs, Dave, and I agree right there, Michelle. Max is watching from North Carolina. Uh, Herschel says, how do you keep the come-along rope on when ponying? Oh, easy. It, it, easy, folks. It's, uh, you want to, and that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Your hands, your hands are, are, are communicating to that mule every time. You drop a hand, you drop a shoulder. You lift up a hand, you lift up a shoulder. You get that? When your hands are even, the mules can be balanced. The big thing that you have to do is feel the rope. Remember I showed you moving the play in the tune? Play in the tune. Not grabbing it, playing the tune. So. While I have the rope between my finger and my thumb, I'm feeling with my hands that rope. I'm feeling it. I know it. When I feel it get tight in my finger and my thumb, then I may take and put a little bit more pressure on it. Okay? I may put a little bit more pressure on it. But when I'm, when I'm got it between my finger and my thumb, I got it alongside of me here. I can feel with my finger and my thumb how much pressure is on that lead rope. And if I feel that the, there's too much pressure on the lead rope and it's pulling against me, I take and play the tune and put my hand around that lead rope, roll my wrist, give them a sharp bump like this, like that. Okay. Now, there are times that I'll dally as well, too. And I watch that rope. If I'm if I'm leading five to 10 mules behind me, I'm going to be dallying because I cannot hold five to 10 mules, nor can my mule necessarily I'm riding. But if I do it right, I can handle the first three or four, which will handle then the rest of them as you go down. The big thing is, folks, when you are riding, when I'm leading a pack mule, I don't leave that pack mule in a halter. I leave them with my come along rope because it gives me full communication. My halter does not give me full communication. The biggest thing the halter doesn't do, it doesn't give me relief. Okay. Because when I make it tight, the come, the, the, and I make the whole halter snug, it's going to be snug all the time. There's no relief. So the mule doesn't understand completely right and wrong but they do with a come along hitch. They get relief when they do it correctly and they get bumped when they're doing it incorrectly. So comfortable, uncomfortable. So you just have to keep an eye, especially if you're dallying folks, you've got to keep an eye on your fingers so you don't lose any fingers out of this deal. Usually you'll see a roper that's missing the first part of his finger in here because he got caught in a dally. But anyway, you got to feel it. And you do, if you can do it on the ground, and lead them across things with just looking over your right shoulder and not turning around and looking at them, looking over your right shoulder. If you can do it on the ground and you can be consistent going over top of barriers and everything else, you can get in the saddle and lead them. Awesome. Good question there. Thank you, Herschel. Raymond is watching from Oklahoma. We've got, uh, let's see here, Pat watching from Breezy, Indiana. Shelly is watching from Suki, British, British Columbia. There we go, Canada again. Uh, let's see here. Million dollar question, Steve. So there's a million dollars on the line right here. How to teach the mule not to pee on stall shavings? How do you teach the mule to pee? That Shelly said she'll give you a million dollars. That is the whole purpose of stall shavings is to take up any moisture that's going to be around. Now, if you want to teach your mule to only potty in one place, okay? Put road apples in one place, P 
peeing another. Okay, you ready, folks? I'm getting ready to get a million dollars here, Dave. Take a car tire and put it over the main area where the animal seems to be pooping. If he's pooping all over, take and put a car tire on it. And the one place that he's not pooping at, that is where he'll go. Same thing with urinating, okay? If he's urinating in front of the gate or pooping in front of the gate, you don't have to walk in and out of it. So put a tire there, okay? And they will stop pooping and peeing in front of that gate. All right, I'm ready for my million dollars. All right. Uh, you, our address is at muleranch.com, Shelly. And uh, if, you, uh, if you need any additional information, just let us know. But uh, you know what? When that comes through, we'll send you a, a Queen Valley Mule Ranch knife. How about that? We'll send you a Queen Valley Mule Ranch knife when that transfer comes through. Uh, Larry's watching. I'm with you on using the Foxtrotter as an excellent broodmare to produce a fine mule. Vicky yep. says, we have done some groundwork and been packing on our just-turned four-year-old mule last two years. My question is, do you recommend we have the knees x-rayed to know if her knees are ready? At four years old, 99.9% .9 of them will have knees closed. Yes, you can do a sonogram. Yes, you can do an x-ray to know for sure, okay? But otherwise, thanks for thinking of the mule. That's wonderful. I'm a four-year-old usually is there. Usually by the time they're three, they're closed up really good. And hey, Dave, I've got a bridle I want to give away today. All right, let's go ahead. Let's add, you got your question? Okay, I got my question. All right, so folks, the way this is going to work is Steve is going to ask a question, and I have a list in front of me of all the comments that are coming through on YouTube and Facebook. So it may look a little bit different on your screen. We're going to go by my list. And the first person that I see on my list that gets the answer right gets the bridle. All right, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, now, this is a leather bridle. You can either have a larger or a smaller one and, and then go from there. Um, and I'm going to give away two because I didn't give away the last time. Okay. So, so you want to do two questions or the first two people? Two, two questions. Okay, so we're going with question number one here. Question number one. Number one, what's the name of my dog? All right. Y'all heard that. What's the name of the dog? Let's right. see here. Now, now I'm going to give you a tough one. Now, we've talked about this today. Okay. Okay. The name of the dog and the name of your four-year-old. So they can name your four-year-old. <coughs> See, I must have paid attention. Anyway, uh, name of your four-year-old, then by golly, you're going to get a bride. Yeah. What's the name of my four-year-old bull? <laughs> bull of the suburbs. <laughs> oh, hey, we've got a winner here. We've got a winner here. Okay. So uh, our first winner, correctly named your dog, that is Michelle Butler named Jess. There we go. So Michelle, send an email to steve at muleranch.com letting him know if you want a large or regular size bridle and the address to send it to. And then Pat put in there fluffy. <laughs> Pat Pat was Pat was taking a stab in the dark saying, oh, I'll just play the odds here. Uh, and then and then uh, we have a winner for question number two. It's uh, Jackie. Jackie Moise from, uh, let's see, is Jackie, Jackie, are you the one from Placidas? Are you the Jackie from Placidas? Either which way, the answer is Stevie. Stevie is my four-year-old who may as well be 14 years old. He's a big sassy pants. And uh, Jackie, you won. Send an email to steve at muleranch.com. Uh, let him know if you want the large or the regular sized bridle and what address to send it to. That's a lot of fun. Um, hey, we got a couple more questions. Can we? Ra Do you have a couple seconds, Steve? Let's go, buddy. I, I got plenty of time. I got nothing bother me, but I am going to go work on my 49 Mercury as soon as I go out the door. Yeah, Steve's got some cruising to do. Uh, yeah. Sonia sent a message in. My mother had a mule, has a mule that has bonded with my daughter. Molly is her name. She has never really had a halter or nothing on her. She basically is a yard dog that follows my daughter around like a dog. She's very possessive of my daughter and they have bonded. We have horses but never really worked with a mule. Basically, Miss Molly was a rescue. She bonded with my 15-year-old, gets really excited when she sees her, and I need to know where to start with her. 
My experience is with horses, not mules. Molly is also very protective and doesn't allow any horses around my daughter. Never in my life, life have I seen a mule and a horse do this. My daughter can pet her, brush her, um, brush her out, and love on her all day. Molly will stand there all day for long hours on end while my daughter brushes, gives her attention and love. When other horses come around, she will chase them away, then always comes back to my daughter. Molly is very intelligent, very gentle with my daughter. She's also very protective um, with my daughter with strange animals that come along. A strange dog comes around and she's on them like a guard. She's on them like a guard dog. Then she always comes back after she's done chasing. Where do I start? What video do I watch? Yeah. Ground communication is absolutely, folks. Anytime you're starting anything, listen, I have taken baby mules that the mama has just dropped them. They're still in the sack. And I help them get out of the sack. I take some baling twine and I put a come along hitch on them. They may be laying down where they're kind of halfway setting up there. And I put the come along hitch on them very gently and they're still wet. And I move their nose to the right and to the left and ahead just a little bit. Notice I said, I'm barely doing it. When they get up and they get moving around and they get their, their first uh, bite of dinner or breakfast, whatever it may be, okay? When they're, when they're sucking, then they get that all done. I'll put the come along hitch on them again because I want them to have that first, get that colostrum going, going good. I put the come along hitch on them again. And again, I move the nose right and left, back and forward a little bit. So even clear back when, I, when they're just barely born, folks, I'll use a form of the come along rope. You cannot do enough of it. They, they learn, listen to this, they learn from their nose. That's the difference between a horse and a mule, okay? They'll learn from their nose. They're more susceptible. So uh, absolutely, do I want to do all of my groundwork, backing up, turning right, turning left, all that stuff. When I get that going good, you know, th then I've got something worthwhile. But I'm going to tell you, folks, very few of you, very few of you have got one that's really well trained. Now picture me at Bishop. There's four of us. There's three riders and one guy on the ground. Each rider has to pack a mule and saddle a horse or a riding mule. The guy on the ground has to pack two mules. We can't tie to nothing. We can't hobble them. They have to stand there while we are packing them. Now, let's add to it. There's all these mules and horses that are still running around that haven't been caught yet and guys trying to chase them. My mule and horses are still standing there quiet, waiting to be packed. Oh, but Steve, no, listen to me. I packed the mule in 58 seconds. So I'm not saying fluffy, stand still while I pack you. No, no, I'm flying. And at the same time, I'm yelling. Hey, Bobby, where are you? Hey, Dan, where are you? Hey, 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 Max, where are you? And they tell me, I've got this on, I've got that on, we're flying. Now, wait a minute. I'm, let me add one more thing to you. Now, remember, I've only got the come along hitch on there. In this particular case, rope halter, because by now, they're so well trained, they stand there quiet. But until this hour, they were pretty much in a come along hitch all the time until we were in the middle of training. Now, listen to this. Not only did we have all the animals running around, the people running around, we've got over 10,000 people up in the audience yelling and screaming. You want more? The announcer has got the music blaring off there as well. So I hear people say, oh, but Steve, you know, they're going, somebody's going to be there to hold on to them. No, no, no. If they are well trained to that bridle, to that halter, they will stand there. So there's a goal for you. There's a goal, Dave. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. We're close to the end. We've got uh, uh, Jim is watching from Maryland. We got Larry watching from Montana. Let's see. Naomi's got a question and she says, volcano eruption vibration sensitivity. How do you deal with that when your mule feels the tremors hundreds of miles away? I, I guess you have to have a volcano nearby first. 
the Tonga volcano burst like the biggest bomb ever. My mule is out of control every sense you can think of. Wow. Well, I can tell you, folks, I've had lightning strike close to me, and I can actually feel the lightning through those metal shoes into them mules. Yeah, it's kind of a funny vibrating feeling. Nothing you can do, folks. Listen, you can't train them to a mountain lion. You can't train them to a rattlesnake, and they stay trained. Get that in your mind, okay? No such thing as desensitizing. Put the come along hitch on them, and it will work. Put the come along hitch on them. You guys, you can't do enough of it. Dave, one of these times, we need to maybe show a little clip. Uh, it's at the end of my packing video of us packing at Bishop with all that stuff going on. All right. Okay. And one, one other thing. Yes. I sent you the picture of the lady who were this really... Did I lose you, Steve? You there? I think I lost him. Y'all still there hanging out with me? Get Steve back here. Um, he's got a he's got a uh, picture that he sent over that I'm trying to bring up here. Um, everything that we've talked about today, folks, uh, there's a lot of really great stuff that you can find at MuleRanch.com. Um, and if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you ought to get subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, lots of really amazing videos there. And uh, a little cool thing is if you go and you actually are on a, um, here he comes again. Hey, hold on one second. All right, there we go. Whoa. All right, hey, he's back. Hang on one second. So if you're at Mule Ranch, or if, you're, if you search for us on YouTube and you visit our channel, Underneath, let me see if I can actually bring it up here. I want to show you folks this. This is a really, really cool, um, let's see, Mule Ranch. Really cool thing. Okay. Um, share my screen. Here we go. When you are on YouTube, you can do this with any channel, uh, but if you go and you look at the Queen Valley Mule Ranch channel, first click subscribe. You can see I'm subscribed to the channel right here. But then right here, there's a little magnifying glass. You're, you can search our channel only using that magnifying glass, meaning you can use this main search up here and it'll show you everybody's stuff. But if you want to find Steve's stuff down here, search. So you could just do a search for Martin Gale. Isn't that something? And it'll show you right here all of the stuff, all of the top hits for Martin Gale. Yeah. And so if you wanted to look for shoeing, it'll limit your searching just to Queen Valley Mule Ranch and bring up all the videos. So that's a really cool feature. Um, yeah. Really cool feature for um, uh, YouTube. Okay, Steve, you were talking uh, before we lost you there. So maybe we could, one of these times, uh, shoot a little, have a little insert there of me at Bishop to World Championships with everything running around and us packing. But the other thing is the, the uh, email I sent you with the people who had the gentle meal kicking and biting at them. Yeah. They, I think I, got, I think I got that here. Let me see if I can pull well, it up. We don't right. need to do it now necessarily because I know we're running out of time. But this next session, Dave, I'd like to show people how this mule was a gentle mule, kid mule, and all of a sudden started biting and kicking. It was cow kicking, okay, and, and, and biting. And I'd like to show folks this and show them the end result, how they were able to help this mule. That's good. Yeah, we'll find that and we can put it up uh, on a uh, future broadcast. Um, yeah. All right, let me see if we got everyone taken care of here. Uh, Michelle says, you've cleared up a lot of issues for me tonight concerning buying a mule. I'm too old to hit the ground, so I need to buy wisely. Yes, yes, that's very good. Um, let's see here. Lots of folks hanging out. Uh, got a little smart aleck here. Hondo goes, Jess Edwards, full name. So Hondo was trying to outsmart the system there. That was Hondo. Good. Um, Jackie's got the question. Can you describe how to tie the come along rope? What I'm going to do, Jackie, is it's uh, honestly it's not worth trying to describe it. Um, it's 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 really really difficult to describe, and um, and so it just make better uh, for you to check out this video. Uh, I've got f one, two, three. Four videos, I think, right here of Steve uh, putting on the come-along rope, so that can that can be helpful. 
Uh, Mary Jo says, um, does the come along work on a horse also? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Horse, donkey, cows, camels. I've, I've used it a little bit everything. Now here, Dave, this is the one thing. Get this in your mind, folks. This is why I've got a kit. Because it's one thing putting the, the come along hitch on. It's another thing knowing how to use it. You don't just put it on and go, okay, work miracles. No, watch the video. Watch me working with that cowboy, okay? And then some other videos that we got too, that's, that's some freebie stuff. But the video I put in there, folks, is the one that gives you the most detail. And I can tell you this, okay? And I appreciate Dave really hammering me on this because he wanted shots different ways. Because, folks, I can't tell you how many times I would call Nick West in Canada to help me out with the come along rope. Or when Nick was right there with me, we're talking 30 years ago, when he was right there with me saying, do it like this. Now, he would be blown away if you've seen how it's being used now, because it's really a lot more finesse now. Okay? Because before it was kind of rough. But let's go back, Dave. Uh, that come along hitch, folks, is your saving grace. I'm telling you, if you want to have your meal right and you want to have your donkey paying attention, come along hitch, come along hitch, come along hitch. Raymond says, should I use the come along hitch for training to stand properly firing hoof trimming? I would say yes. Absolutely. Well, you see it in the video yeah. of me with the guy's back, with the mule's back foot, you know. And matter of fact, when I'm chewing Stacy, in the video, she's just standing there and the lead rope is hanging on the ground. Okay, listen folks, can I tell you, yes, eventually you can just use the rope halter, all right? Will you have to still come back to the come along hitch? Yes, okay? But I want you to understand, if you can't handle the groundwork, why are you getting in the saddle? Finesse it with the groundwork first. I don't care if you bought a trained mule, Okay, you still got a good possibility of getting hurt because of the lack of communication that you have with these hands. Uh, are mules aged by their teeth the same way as horses and donkeys? And mules, do they generally live longer than horses? Example, a four-year-old has the same tooth markers as a four-year-old horse. Yes, yeah, okay. same, same basic teeth, your incisors, your your canines, all of that, you know, all your molars are all the same. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Good question. Okay. The main thing is though, folks, float the teeth every year, every spring, worm them, float them. Okay. If you're starting to have problems, then go back to the teeth when it comes down to stopping, going, things like that. Even bucking, folks, even bucking. If one is bucking, a lot of times it's the TMJs that are that are hanging up. Billy asks, are there any horse breeds that are known to produce poor quality mules or is it always a matter of finding an individual uh, structure? Uh, thanks gentlemen, for the first time in my life, I look forward to Wednesdays. That's funny. <laughs> well, look folks, if, if, if you, here's the problem we used to have. We bred the sorry mares with just any kind of jack. We end up with a sorry mule. Breed to quality, breed to quality. And what I mean by quality, a brain. Not because it's show, because it shows really nice, all that stuff there, if it's got a good brain. I've seen some quarter horses that unless they were working cattle, they were worthless. They were worthless out there on the side of a mountain, okay? They couldn't hardly get around, but you put them in front of a cow, yeah, that's what they're bred for. That's what they're bred for, all right? Your Tennessee walkers, man, they're just going and looking like this, their old heads in the air, and they're going 90 miles an hour down the road. <clears throat> That's fine on the road, but you guys are riding on the trails, okay? And you, you can't, your, your, your other riders with you can't keep up with them. So let's go back. Let me tell you this, folks. When I was teaching my classes at Pierce College in L.A., I taught one on raising babies, raising baby mules and baby donkeys. And one of the things I suggest to people everywhere is don't do that. Okay, and here's why. 
okay? You don't know the disposition of that baby. You don't see it. Yes, you breed to a good disposition mare. Yes, you breed to a good disposition, disposition jack. But you can still have a sorry-minded animal, just like with people. I mean, some people are burn, born criminals. I hate to say that, but they are. Okay, but let's go back. I had a lady in my, in my class that was going to leave because she didn't want to hear me say, don't breed your mare and, and try to raise a baby. It doesn't always work. That mule ended up hating her, didn't want to be around her. She'd walk in the corral and the mule would come at her with her teeth wide open. She would spin and kick, all kinds of stuff. But I would walk in there or somebody else walked in there. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. Why? I don't know. But I have seen it time and time again. You know, try to buy you a yearling that's starting to have a mind. When they're seven, folks, they, they, they're growing till they're seven. When they're seven, they have the majority of their bone growth, the majority of their way of going. Their mind is right, things like this by the time they're seven. Now, have I seen older mules? Yes. I've seen mules back in their 40s. Uh, Uncle Bud used to have one that killed rattlesnakes out in the pasture. He was good with it, okay? But I've also seen young mules, uh, like my, my big Shire mule. Uh, I had Tom and Katie, and Tommy, uh, Katie died at 16. And Tom died at 28, okay? My wife's mule, we bought it as a two-year-old. My favorite age to buy one, listen to that. My favorite age to buy one is a two-year-old. They're coming close to the knees being closed, coming pretty close to having their bone structure starting to get developed good, where you can see confirmation. Go on. And we, we, uh, we rode her and trained with her and hunted with her and were cattle with her, with her for 26 years. And she stayed in a 10 by 20 stall. But I kept her finally tuned because my wife ride four or five times a year. Or one of the grandkids would, when they would come here once in a while since they're in Michigan, when I would put the, anyway, anybody, anybody I put on that mule, because the mule was well-trained, they could handle it. So, you know, disposition, folks, you know, buy yourself a two-year-old, Buy yourself maybe a three-year-old that nobody's messed with and go from there. Uh, we got Robert watching from Washington. Uh, his tapaderos arrived today, so he's saying thank you. Uh, let's see here. Raymond says thanks for all the information. Uh, one of our friends on YouTube says listen to Mr. Steve, the Come Along Hitch works. And Mickey says is the DVD that comes with the ground foundation available to buy without the Come Along Hitch? Or the rope halter. Now I think I think it is. Um, if you can't find it, uh, Mickey, send me a message and I'll get you fixed up. Steve, now that's can, it. That's all we got we for can, today. Yeah, we can send him a DVD. We can send you a digital right away. You yeah, know? you can get a digital right away. That's all we got for today, Steve. Thanks so much for taking the time. I'm gonna go work on my 49 Mercury. I don't have any mules to ride. Y'all get out there. If you're cruising this weekend out in uh, Mesa Apache Junction area, you might see a uh, you might see a man driving around in a Mercury or a Falcon, and uh, that would be Mr. Steve. So wave yeah. and say hello. The if you're car out show is at Signal Butte and Main Street, and then we've got another car show on Saturday. We're going to do, and it, it's a benefit. I love doing these benefits to help out people. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. We'll talk soon. Bye bye.